This is a patient who needs a full mouth reconstruction and we have mounted the cast on a semi-adjustable articulator. The maxillary cast was mounted with the help of a face bore record. The mandibular cast is mounted with the help of this centric relation bite. And this was made at an increased VD because we used an anterior deprogrammer in the form of unwind MD to allow for the condyles to go into their musculoskeletally stable CR position. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up and remove this CR record. And as I close down, you will realize that none of the teeth contact each other. This is because, as I mentioned, the CR record was made at an increased vertical dimension. And that is why there's a gap between all the teeth. All right, now as I open the incisal pin and I lift this up, all right, now the teeth will go and contact each other at RCP. That's the first point of contact in centric relation. All right, as I close down here, you can see that the teeth are definitely not intercuspating. All right, uh, I don't see any contacts on uh, this side. If I were to look towards the other side, um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there is a contact here between the upper third molar and, and the lower second molar. All right, there's, there's a contact here, right here. Okay, now what's important for me to recognize is this patient needs a full mouth rehabilitation because there is one, a hit and slide occlusion. So if I would open these centric latches, here you can see that this is the patient's contact in CR, but as the patient clenches down, the mandible slides and comes into MIP. As you can see, there is beautiful intercuspation in MIP on the right side, but as I take this case into centric relation, the entire intercuspation changes. A similar situation on this side as well, friends. Here you have the hit and then the slide into MIP. You can see that the mandible is completely locked inside the maxilla because this patient is a classic clencher. And I say that because if you were to look closely, all the palatal cusps here are severely attrited. But if you see the buccal cusps, which are the non-functional cusps, they are standing relatively tall and sharp. More importantly, if you look at the incisors, the wear pattern on the incisor edges is angular. And if you look at these canine teeth, these canine teeth beautifully talk about the angular pattern of attrition. All right. A similar situation here on the mandibular arch. You can see the buccal cusps on either side. Look at these, the sixes. The buccal cusps are severely attrited, but when you look at the lingual or the non-functional cusps, these are standing tall, which means this patient is clenching, and that is why this patient is losing excessive amount of tooth material. There's a lot of dentin that is exposed, and, and that's why we need a full mouth reconstruction. Now, Intraorally, or even extraorally, when I see this patient, the lower facial height seems like it's collapsed, which means a lot of clinicians are tempted to think that the vertical is lost and that we will have to increase the VD. In such situations, as you can see, you don't have to do that. Look here. In centric relation, there is so much space available for me to work with. The technician can easily build up beautiful aesthetics and beautiful anterior guidance at this particular VD itself. In fact, if I want to, I can decrease the vertical dimension. If I don't want to see such tall anterior teeth, I can always decrease the VD. But what's more important in this video is me telling you that do not raise the vertical dimension in all cases just because you believe there is a collapse in, in the facial proportions. First, go ahead and deprogram the mandible, record the centric relation, mount it on a semi-adjustable articulator, and try to identify at RCP, all right, that's the retruded contact position, what is the amount of space that is available for you. That's one. The second you look for is where is the lower incisor in relation to the upper, which means can you get the desired anterior overlap, all right, vertically and horizontally. Remember, we read this as overjet and overbite. Now, if you have that, there is, like in this case, friends, no need to raise the vertical dimension at all. Simply work at the first point of tooth contact. 
if you don't raise the VD, you have not stretched any of the elevator muscles. This makes sure that the patient accommodates and adapts to the reconstruction much faster. If you want more details about this, feel free to go ahead and check out my books, which are starter volume and master volume of clinical fixed prosthodontics. You see my babies right here. That's the starter volume. This is the master volume. These will give you details on all procedures that are fixed prosto related, including full mouth reconstructions. I wish you all the very best. Bye-bye.